preparing to record. Recording is on. Okay, we're now recording. Okay, hello everybody. Um, anybody watching this? Um, we're here hanging out on Jitsi. My name is Bailey Lamont. I am the chair of Pirate Parties International. I'm speaking to you from London, Ontario, Canada. And I am here talking with Tan Saret Akinshi. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yeah, it's correct. All right, awesome. So Tan is in Turkey and he is one of the co-presidents of the Turkish Pirate Party the new Turkish Pirate Party, and uh, they just became a member of Pirate Parties International a couple months ago at our General Assembly. And um, so we're going to talk to Tan a little bit about the Turkish Pirate Party and about a anti-social media censorship campaign that they have going on right now. So Tan, why don't you start just by introducing yourself and um, you know, telling us a little bit about the Turkish pirates and, uh, you know, just what you guys uh, have been up to. Okay, so I am uh, Tanakınca. I am the co-president of Pirate Party Turkey, as Bailey said. And currently we, as the new Pirate Party Turkey, are uh, working towards uh, being funded as an actual party and uh, organizing in anti-censorship campaigns that aim to achieve uh, internet freedom in our country, as well as many other freedoms that we need to accomplish here, as uh, we don't have a much free uh, system in this country. Yeah, um, you hear a lot about that, um, just censorship in Turkey with social media and the media in general. So what is the situation there exactly? Um, like what laws are in place? What is the government doing exactly um, when it comes to that censorship? Okay, so our government like, has always been doing some you know, uh, limitations, has always been implementing some limitations on social media and the news uh, since like the coups uh, happened in 1980s. But but nowadays, like in especially in the last 10 years, uh, the current government, the AKP ruling party of Turkey the government has been implementing so much censorship law, laws that our country's freedom index got very low, like even lower than some countries that we have been calling authoritarian. Uh, such as, you know, uh, the Middle Eastern countries. Uh, and um, the laws that are in place are such that if you criticize the government, even a little bit by like using some, uh, I mean, criticism, uh, you can end up in prison only for doing a very simple criticism like uh, you, for example, you say uh, the ruling party uh, has some... Uh, it has been involved in some corruption or that the, uh, you know, uh, the people in power uh, are wrong about several topics. Saying even that the president is wrong is has even become a threat to go to prison. So it's very easy to say that there is no freedom of speech in this country. Uh, and it's even getting worse with new laws such as uh, you know, uh, laws that control the internet, like the, the recent one suggested by the um, um, by, by several ministries that the internet should be restricted to, uh, you know, uh, oppose uh, uh, disinformation. And, and they generally do that. They generally uh, use disinformation and uh, internet security as a reason to implement more restrictions such as uh, the uh, outside, uh, such as the courts being able to close social media accounts, such as forcing social media companies to open branches in Turkey so they can force them to close accounts, and then, and also they, uh, they they also want to force social media companies and uh, and websites to share IPs of the guests and the users. So the government actually wants to 
do do many uh, regulations to control citizens to uh, to actually move them like the guns to move everyone so uh, we can't speak in internet which is currently our only free space yeah well it's it's crazy when you think about how much we use social media these days and and everything that we use it for whether it's like you know sharing a news article or having a conversation with family members or um you know or or, or like organizing events like a lot of people use social media for that and you know there's so much that goes on through the internet, especially in pandemic times, right? And uh, just through social media. And the idea that we should not have privacy in that setting, the idea that the internet should not be a place where we can be safe to share with each other and talk with each other and, you know, share information freely and openly. It's just, it's completely absurd. And I was reading actually about, um, you know, what you said about opening offices, different companies, um, you know, having to open offices in Turkey. Um, if the companies, if the, if the social media site has over a million Turkish users, um, I was reading about that. And I was reading about um you know just like the removal of news articles and stuff like how um there was a media outlet uh which you know was considered a, a left-wing media outlet i guess um who published an article about a presidential advisor forging their high school diploma and how that um that was that was, uh, you know, the court ruled that they had to remove the news report. And, and they were using the whole right to be forgotten thing as the reason for it. The idea that, you know, you should be able to have information about yourself removed from the internet, which is a good thing to have, right? But it's supposed to be when it's not in the public interest. And you'd think that a presidential advisor, you know, this kind of information about them would be in the public interest. So I think the problem is that the government generally, like the every other government, I think, generally uses those stuff like, you know, the right to be forgotten or anti disinformation as an excuse to implement such, uh, such restrictions and to censor the media at the end of the day. So I think that such policies uh, shouldn't be like supported by the public and we should be aware that the government, we should be aware of what the government is trying to do when they suggest uh, new internet laws, new restriction laws, new social media laws that we uh, need to adhere to. And uh, it's true that in Turkey, it's very common for the, you know, for the court to close down websites and uh, those close downs even happen on a daily basis. But uh, on the social media, there was a thing that the social media users were like anonymous. So, you know, they as, as they were in the social media, they just could uh, share whatever they want. They just, uh, you know, uh, express their ideas and uh, share the news uh, without any censorship as they were anonymous. But now, as the government, as you said, wants the social media outlets to open uh, br local branches, uh, the anonymity will also go down as the government will force those companies to to share, uh, you know, to share information about their accounts. Yeah, and that's that's wrong in so many ways. I mean, the right to anonymity on the internet is extremely important. I mean, before social media took over the internet, that was the normal thing, was being anonymous on the internet. It used to be a rule when you started using the internet was you don't share who you are, right? You, it was a safety concern of like, you don't share your identity, you don't give anybody on the internet personal information about yourself. And I mean, that's definitely 
the culture around that has definitely changed to a degree, right? Uh, because, you know, with social media being such a big thing now, it's like, you know, we've all got our identities out there. We've all got our faces online and, you know, lots of information about ourselves, right? So much information about ourselves is out there now. And we willingly give that to these social media companies. But, you know, we should we should be able to have control over, um, you know, what information we decide to put out there and what we decide to share in general when it comes to the news or information about whatever, and, you know, government shouldn't be able to have control over that. And they certainly should not be able to unmask people who are choosing to stay anonymous. And even if you don't choose to stay anonymous, right, the government should still not be able to just monitor everything that you do and everything that you say and then lock you in jail for it when they don't like it. But this is, I know that this is you know, we hear about it a lot. It's a common thing in Turkey for that to happen. It's common in a lot of different places, even countries that are supposedly free in this regard, right? Yeah. It still happens. Yeah, so you're right that in Turkey, actually, we as the Pirate Party Turkey want that the government uh, should be limited and it shouldn't, like, uh, have an impact on people's ideas and people's activities that don't cause any cause any problem uh, to the you know to the public but the uh, authorities generally are very concerned on you know the idea to be flown because they claim that especially in the pandemic they claim that the disinformation is very you know it can easily be transformed throughout the social media throughout the internet if it's not censored and they also you know as always claim that the child porn and stuff like that are the primary reasons that they they uh, just restrict the internet. But uh, we all know that those are just, you know, uh, excuses. And uh, I personally think that censoring internet and putting so much censorship, putting so much restrictions to the internet doesn't solve the uh, problems like child porn, uh, disinformation and alike, as those uh, stuff have root problems, root uh, causes. And the governments generally don't solve those root causes such as protecting the children, such as, you know, informing citizens, and they just censor the internet. And internet has nothing to do with those uh, crimes, I think, and those, you know, bad stuff, I think. So instead of censoring the internet, I suggest that we inform the citizens against this information and we support the children against child porn and alike. So, so that's my suggestion and uh, the suggestion of the people in my party. You make a really, really, really important point there because you're so right that governments will often use things like child sexual abuse content and cyberbullying and, you know, things that, you know, that are very serious issues. They, they, they use these things as excuses for censorship on the internet, but they tend to do very little, you know, when it comes to taking action against these things. So, you know, it's like we, we already have laws against child abuse, right? There are laws against bullying. There are laws to deal with these things already. Not that those laws are necessarily effective all the time, right? Because these things are still running rampant um unfortunately but it's yeah i mean censoring the internet and thinking that you're combating these things is just it's delusional at best right and it's dishonest because it's not actually combating these things it's you know censoring the internet does not stop child abuse that's still very much happening no matter how much you censor right um, so that's that's a really important point is those things tend to get used as excuses. Right. And it's it's manipulative because then a lot of people will think that censorship laws are, you know, are, are there for a good reason. Right. And they think, yeah, because like everybody, everybody's against child abuse. Right. Or they should be. 
right? Every, you, know, you should be against bullying, right? Cyberbullying. Like these are things that like most, you know, I think decent human beings are against. So they think like, oh, well, yeah, we need to stop the child sexual abuse content. We need to stop the cyberbullying. So, you know, if this is what we need to do to stop these things, then let's do it, right? And people don't realize that, you know, this, this is actually not going to solve those issues. And, you know, you point out that, yes, there are deeper root causes of why this is happening. And, you know, there's, there's so much, I mean, you know, this is a deep, this is a deep rabbit hole, right, of like, why these things happen and stuff. But, you know, the point is that, these things are not happening because of the internet. They're happening for their own reasons that, you know, need to get addressed. And, you know, the, the internet is just, you know, one way that these things are being shared and, and, you know, the bullies are, are using the internet is just one thing that bullies and child abusers are using, um, you know, to, to do what they do. But censoring the internet does not stop that, right? If, if, if the whole internet shut down, these things would still be happening in society, right? It would just be happening. It would be shared in a different way. It would be happening in a different way, right? Yeah. Offline. And we say, I truly agree with you. And, and nowadays, it's the disinformation on the pandemic that the governments are using as an excuse. And nowadays, as the people want the pandemic to end, they tend to support those, you know, anti-disinformation laws. But uh, as we and several people in our country that are, you know, interested in internet freedom and uh, and generally in computer sciences are now saying that uh, we should stand with our social media, we should stand with the internet. And so uh, several weeks ago, like two weeks ago, the, the hashtag social media dokunma, uh, meaning don't touch to my social media, became a trend topic in our country. And we as Pirate Party thought that we should make a, a campaign out of this. We should organize the people and uh, and invite them to sign a petition to the government, to the President Erdogan, to say him that we want a free internet and a free social media that isn't censored by enemies and that has free information and net neutrality. That's what we demand from the government right now. As we are reached to the 5,000 signers only in a week. And we are going even more. We are going, uh, I hope that we go even up to 10,000 uh, signers in s several weeks. Yeah, so this petition that you guys started. Um, can you repeat the number? How many how many have signed it right now? Okay, That's so what? currently, uh, if I need to speak correctly, we are very near to 5,000 signs. And that's just over the last couple of weeks. That's just over a week, I would oh, say. Oh, that, oh. Just over a week. Because this is new, right? When did you guys yeah. start it? It was a week ago? We started last week uh, on um, Wednesday morning, and we reached like uh, to three hundred uh, signers in just two days, and then it, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger as the popular people, like the famous people, started to share it with other people, and then it got to the point that it reaches to five thousand signers. Wow, that's that's really cool. That grew very fast. Yeah. Was this just like, I mean, I know you guys are active on Twitter. Um, like, is that just through sharing on Twitter? Or like, do you guys like, do you guys go out into the streets? I know that it's hard, it might be hard to do that with, you know, because we're not out of the pandemic yet, right? So I don't know yeah. if you guys are like, you know, in a lockdown right now or what, but do you guys, um, is this all just from sharing online on Twitter or do you have other like ways of like reaching out and spreading the word? Okay, so in first place, we have tried Twitter and contacting with the famous people 
that are interested in interested in that area of like internet and computer sciences, and they retweeted our uh, campaign, and th and that way we have reached to three hundred uh, signers, and then we have uh, and, and at the same time, by the way, at the same week, like in the same week, we have opened a young pirate branch in our party that uh, you know organizes the people, minor people under 18 years old that uh, so we have won many people like many young people to our party with that branch and those people you know those very young you know uh, fellows of our party actually joined to twitch streams and talk with online streamers even with ecam girls you know to uh, uh, to sign that petition so they shared those uh, all our petition in various streams and various accounts and that grew very fast thanks to that so i would uh, send a very big applause to our young pirates uh, branch uh, for making it that big that's super cool um yeah like this is definitely something that like the younger generations uh, tend to be very passionate about and there's young pirates in I think I think pretty much every country where there's a pirate party, there's like a lot of young pirates, even if there's not like a young pirates group specifically, like a lot of pirates are, you know, um, from the younger generation who understands uh, the way that the internet works and social media a little better than like, you know, the, the boomers and like the old generation. Not that we don't, not that we don't have like, you know, older folks in, in Pirate Party. I'm, I'm certainly old compared to you. I'm like grandma compared to you. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's always amazing to see young people, especially, you know, teenagers and people who are in their early 20s getting active on these issues because, you know, you guys are the ones that are going to stop this bullshit, you know what I mean? When it comes to censorship and, you know, especially in your country, right? With the pirate movement growing as fast as it is, um, it sounds like you guys are already gaining a really strong voice there. I mean, if you can get 5,000 signatures on a on a petition in a week, that's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm glad that uh, we have actually reached to that point. It's a very small organization. So if I need to speak honestly, the Pi Pi Turkey is not a legal party yet. So it's a very, you know, a type of clandestine organization for now. But uh, the problem is that the Turkish uh, party laws are also very hard. So for, for example, you need to have like 30 people. You know, it's okay that we have, we have even more people at the moment, but the problem is that uh, to be accepted as a legal party, you need the permission of the uh, high uh, central uh, electoral committee, which generally doesn't act very objectively when it comes to accepting parties. For example, if I need to talk about a party that isn't accepted to be funded for one year, is the Green Party. The Green Party, you know, was actually opened a year ago on September, uh, in September. And even that they have, you know, fulfilled the need for being a legal party, they haven't received the, uh, you know, certificates from the Central Electoral Committee uh, for a year because they don't want it to be opened. They act very subjectively. And we as the Pi Party are also scared that a uh, several things would be, would happen to us uh, when we, we will try to open our party legally. And they have also started a, a petition campaign like us and they have reached to a very similar numbers to us. And I also uh, hope to uh, hope that uh, the, the the Green Party will be accepted as a legal party soon in our country. So we can be also uh, uh, confident about our party to be opened as easy as possible. Yeah, getting registered as a party 
can be really difficult, especially, you know, depending on where you are in the world. Like, I mean, in Canada, it's challenging if you're a small party, right? But I mean, in Turkey, yeah, like, I, I can only imagine how difficult that is, especially if you have, you know, if you have like this, like, arbitrary, like, committee that gets to decide whether they accept you or not, right? And especially if you're a, a party like the Pirate Party of Turkey, you know, and you are against the current political establishment, right? Or you want to make changes to the system, right? Then that's that that often gets seen as as too radical in a lot of countries right but i can only imagine what they think of that in turkey you know these these government people and and the people in power who uphold this system so you know it's like i you know i wish you guys all the best of luck with that with getting registered you know whenever you're ready to take that step i'll also say though and i say this to a lot of people a lot of pirates when I talk to them about elections and stuff in their countries, because a lot of us pirates, you know, we come from smaller parties who aren't registered, you know, or maybe you live in a system where you are registered and you're, you can run in the election, but your chances of getting a seat is, is, you know, not very high. And one thing that I think it's important for all of us to keep in mind is that there's getting elected and then there's having an influence and those two things are not necessarily the same like even if you don't get elected in your country um you can still have a really strong influence on like the political discourse and the narratives in the media and you know that you know you you, you can influence the political culture you know and it sounds like you guys are already doing that even though you're not registered yet as a party. Yeah, I think that if we like if we influence someone, then we have complete door job. Like we have we have we have reached our uh, you know our goals because what we actually want to do is not to like gain a seats and gain, you know, uh, you know how, how to say I I am getting power. Uh, Actually, we, we pirates involved in politics for uh, establishing our uh, values, not, uh, not not for gaining power. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's even good for us to inf influence people, even if we don't get elected, even if they don't vote us. So uh, it's very uh, important to uh, have an influence on a social media have an influence on uh, internet freedom have an influence on the people that they understand the values that we stand with so yes you are very right about this and uh, our goal is is the one that we have said uh, as well we want to influence people rather rather than uh, having power yeah, and you said something really good there. Um, you, you know, holding on to your own, something about holding on to your own values, not the values of the system. And that's really, really important that you, you know, you, you stick to your guns, you stick to your values, you, you know, you don't betray your values as pirates and certainly not to be part of a system that is corrupt and, you know, that you know, basically just wants to make it harder for you to even exist, you know? Um, it's, it's, yeah, that's a really important thing. And it sounds like you guys really understand that. And, you know, maybe someday it's, it, it's, it's cool that, you know, your main focus is not getting elected and, and, you know, gaining power and stuff. I think that's so important. But, you know, maybe maybe someday you will decide to, that it's, you know, it's time to register as a party. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Um, you know, that's like something that you guys obviously have to decide, you know, what's best for you and when. And, um, you know, you'll you'll figure that out. Um, but, you know, either way, like I said, you're you're definitely by the sounds of it, having a huge influence on, um, you know, just on society there and and you know with all of these people discovering you guys and discovering your petition that you're doing everybody signing on um 
I think it's amazing. It's very cool to watch it from where I'm sitting. And um, especially because, you know, you guys, you guys are, are fairly new as a party, you know? And um, so I just want to congratulate you on that. Yeah, thank you uh, for inviting me to talk about my party and the campaign that we have started. Yeah, no worries. It's great to talk to you about it. Um, so is this something, so I know that in, in Pirate Party Turkey, you guys have different factions. So you've got like a more capitalist faction and then like a more communist faction of your party. Am I correct in that? Yeah, so currently we have six factions. Uh, the three of them are the ideologic factions like Capitalist Pirates, Communist Pirate Movement and the Green Pirates. So they are actually uh, some groupings that were already formed within the party when we were organizing like in the first four months of, you know, refundation that we, as we call it. And as I have seen those groupings that were not, you know, getting well with each other and wanted to do something different than we in the power of the party do, I have uh, suggested them to open some factions so they can uh, organize uh, some groups, some, you know, uh, separate groups that still align themselves with the party, but have some different agendas from the main, uh, you know, the, the main uh, line of the party. So actually that helped very much to Pirates Party because uh, when the, those groupings opened their factions, they have gathered so much people that our party its membership uh, became very, you know, higher, higher than it was before. Because, like, uh, for example, when we do an error, when we do a mistake, uh, we piss off some people as the party. But then, uh, uh, by the when the people that don't like what we uh, the, the the leads of the party do, uh, they currently they say simply can you know open a faction and uh, oppose what we do in that faction by creating new policies and also inviting other people that you know, normally wouldn't join Pirate Party but join to the party only because those factions are very uh, similar to them. So that faction uh, system works very pretty in that month, in the, in the past months. I find that really interesting because, you know, it's like when you look at the pirate movement as a whole globally, like there's so many different kinds of people who join the pirate movement, right? And there and there's so many, so many of us, like, you know, we come from different political backgrounds. Like you get some folks who are more, you know, a little, you know, a little bit more like libertarian, free market, Bitcoin type of folks, right? And then you get some people such as myself who come from like the left wing anarchist kind of anarcho syndicalist background you know turn pirate and then you get some folks who are you know greens and social democrats and you know people who come from like all sorts of different political backgrounds but somehow found common ground in the pirate movement you know and i find that so cool at the same time this can also be a source of conflict i think um you know you see you see it happen sometimes where like people disagree on policies and you know what should be on the platform for the election what shouldn't be um you know just general disagreements between people on whatever issue and you know it, it can be like a source of conflict in that sense and and when you have that kind of conflict it can make it hard to um you know to get things done or to function as a party right um like it, you know, it, it, it does happen and I've seen it happen. And I just think it's interesting that you guys have these different factions in your party so that, you know, hey, if you don't, if you don't like what this group is doing, you know, maybe you identify more with, you know, what the Greens are thinking or, you know, what the communists are thinking. And um, if you don't like what anybody's doing, then, you know, start your own faction. Like, I think that's interesting. And I think that it's, um, it's really cool how you guys do that within your party. Yeah, actually, uh, we have seen that we have seen that problem of like not getting with well with each other and then people leaving the party because of conflicts. 
within our party before the factions and also we have heard several you know similar stories in the old pi party turkey that some people just left the party because they didn't agree with the party leaders about several social economic topics so we have uh, you know we have um, brainstormed about this faction uh, system so that uh, way everyone can be happy and what uh, about the elections what about the real politics how that will work in uh, for example in an election So we have thought that when we enter elections, we will first uh, enter the local elections as the as the party, and uh, we will leave uh, several you know socio-economic agendas to the local candidates, so they can have uh, different agendas depending on the uh, on the region that they are a candidate in, and they would formulate their own uh, views. Uh, while they are still pirates, they are still members of our party, and and that way the the factions also can differ from each other during the election times, as they will push different local candidates in the in different local places. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like if you're if you're running in in you know a local election, like you're definitely going to have a bit of a different focus than if you're running in like a federal election because the local issues are going to be different, right? Um, so that's, yeah, like, I, th I think that that's a good approach, what you're describing to me. And, um, you know, that plus like having the different factions, it's like you guys, it, it sounds like there's a lot of options and a lot of flexibility within your party. Um, uh, and, and I think that's, I think that's really cool and really interesting that you guys do it that way. Yeah, actually, if I need to be honest, uh, we are very inspired from the Pirate Party Australia, which seems okay. to have different, yes, which seems to have different alignments within the party, even if they don't name them as factions. Yeah. And so when I saw the Pirate Party Australia to be like a very pro-liberty and a very active party, I have decided to, you know, do some research on research on their system. And actually, if I need to be honest as well on that topic, uh, we have actually copied some of Pirate Party Australia's a constitution and adapt to that to the Turkish party laws when we were funding our party and when we were doing the financial process back in uh, back in January. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, the Australian pirates are awesome. Um, yeah, I just I, I I think it's I think it's just really fascinating. Um, how you guys are doing it. And it's always cool to learn like how different pirate parties are, are running things, um, you know, because it's different for everyone. It looks different for everyone. And, um, you know, as much as there's a lot of common ground and a lot of sharing and a lot of, you know, the same kinds of ideas, you know, a lot, a lot of the time it's, you know, things will like work in similar ways between countries and stuff. Like, you know, it really, it depends on the party, it depends on the people, but um, it's always interesting to learn how things work country to country. And um, that's, uh, yeah, again, I just, I, I think it's, I think it's fascinating how you guys are running things. Um, do you have, so, so you have your social media petition going right now. Um, is that kind of your main focus right now, or are you guys working on anything else? So right now, uh, it, our, our main focus is to, uh, you know, promote that uh, social anti-censorship um, campaign, the social media campaign. But uh, at the same time, we also have our agenda, like, uh, to be funded as a legal party and to organize as many people as possible to be a actual political organization that engages in real politics in our country. Because uh, since the Pied Party was firstly uh, organized in our country back in 2009, it has never been an actual political party nor an organization that engages in the real politics. And, uh, uh, and the people that were in the leadership positions of the Pied Party were not very uh, you know, positive towards engaging in politics. But now, as our cadre and our, you know, uh, our co community is very involved in politics, we are very 
uh, positive towards opening a legal party and uh, being active on uh, various topics that uh, include the, both the pirate uh, related topics like the digital freedoms and both the you know and the, also the socioeconomic uh, uh, problems in our country. Very cool. Um, so do you have anything else that you would like people to know about? Actually, before we go there, um, where can um, people find your petition? I mean, obviously, I think you want, you know, people from Turkey. I don't know. This is because it's a Turkish petition, right? It's for the yeah. Turkish government. So it's not so much like it's like you want the people that you want to know about it are, are from Turkey. So um do you want to say anything to anybody listening to this from Turkey about where to find the petition or how to follow okay, so, you guys, anything, how to find information about you guys? Okay, so you can visit our website at korsanparty.net uh, where uh, we have a wiki and we will open a fully democracy, fully democracy uh, instance very soon. Uh, we, uh, people can also follow us on Twitter where we are very active and uh, we generally publish the events and campaigns there. Um, they can also check change.org to see our campaign as it's uh, it's on the top topic. Like it's on the, uh, you know, it's, it's quite popular nowadays. So, to, so uh, I suggest them to check out our social media and websites to get more information about our party. Cool. Yeah. So if they go to your Twitter, they go to your website, they'll be able to yeah. see the petition pretty easily and how to join and stuff. That's cool. Um, all right, Tan. Well, uh, do you have anything else that you would like to say to people um, before we close off the interview? Anything that any question that I didn't ask that you want to anything you want to comment on? Like it's you just go for it. Okay, so I will just say one thing. Defend your freedoms and oppose censorship. Defend your freedoms and oppose censorship. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, Tan, this has been a really cool conversation. Um, this was a great idea. I really, I'm really happy that you brought it to me and that we got to talk today. Um, I hope that everybody listening to this conversation enjoyed it i hope that you learned a lot and i hope that especially if you live in turkey i hope that you check out the pirate party of turkey and what they're doing and join their campaign and um yeah once again i think you guys are doing a great job and um definitely we commend you for everything that you're doing now your petition and just you know how you've been able to grow and develop as a party over the last little while and wish you all the best of luck going forward. Thank you for reminding me today. You're very welcome. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording.